So one of our members posted a question about a man she'd been communicating with uh, to arrange a first date. And what happened was that they text, it seems to me, I think they probably had more text communication than any telephone call, because during the text, he had suggested that she come to his part of town, and they live in New York, uh, roughly about 20 minutes from each other, and he claimed that this part of town is nicer than her part of town, that there are more fun things to do in his part of town. Now, her first reaction was that he was rather snobby, suggesting that maybe where he lives is better than when she lives. That's not how I view this, and I thought I'd dive into a deeper conversation about men when these things occur. So what, in my perception, and again, with, with, that, with limited information, and she shared the text message, and I didn't think it, was, it came across snobby, and yet, to some degree, I could see how some parts of town are better than others. Um, I live in Los Angeles. I live in a beach town area. But Beverly Hills is a nicer place in town to go out for nicer food, if you will. Okay. So, um, but coming back to his suggestion of coming to his part of town. Now, my belief is he's acting from a lazy perspective lazy and the reality is is most men these days have become rather lazy in the dating realm for a number of different reasons and i think it's important to explore why this happens rather than judging it so um when i talk about lazy i want you to imagine this um a lot of men get we get we tend to get rejected more by women than men than men rejecting women now that's in the case of asking out on first dates. We tend to get rejected more often. So put that in a box for a second. I know men may not be non-committal and end relationships, and that's a different story. So we get rejected more often. Okay, because of that, it, it wears on our self-esteem. It wears on our uh, ability to feel confident. Now you might hear that and go, well, why would I wanna be with a man who isn't confident? The reality is, is for most of us in midlife, on some level, we've experienced a lot of rejection because we might have experienced a, a divorce, which is a sense of, of rejection. We might have been uh, in a relationship that ended and there's a sense of rejection. And what's happened is men have kind of lost that drive to chase for those men who are in midlife. Okay, to chase. Now, part of the reason that they're not chasing in this particular case, more than likely, is this. He views this person, or he views this member of ours, as a what I call a maybe, a maybe. And what that means is maybe he likes her, maybe he doesn't like her. Now, most likely, all the information he has to go on is a few pictures and a few text messages. That's uh, not enough information to put that person in a category of like, oh, I really want to pursue this person. Unless he feels a strong affinity for the profile, unless you've had this spectacular telephone call that suggests that you really want to connect with this person, which I don't believe happened. I believe they probably just had text exchange. The reality in this particular case is he views her as a maybe and he wants to put in minimal effort. That's what I mean by lazy. Minimal effort. Now, does that make a man bad? Sure, if you're listening to the feminine energy coaches that say men must do the chasing and men must do this and men must do that. Then yeah, he's not your guy. But let's look at this situation. So it's a 20 minute schlep to his part of town if you did decide to go, okay? What's the worst thing that's gonna happen? You've, you know, you have a 20 minute ride back, okay? And, you, and it was a miserable day. Okay, I could see that happening. But what happens if you hit it off with one another? Is it worth making a big deal about the travel? Now the same could be said, why isn't he traveling to her? Well, I'm going to make the following suggestion in this particular case. My guess is they've mostly had telephone calls, or excuse me, text exchanges, which is very difficult to communicate with our thumbs. Our, our you know, human communication 
I believe 80 to 90% is nonverbal. We weren't designed to communicate with our thumbs. It makes it very difficult. I know I have a, a challenge communicating with my thumbs. And in other words, a lot of the thoughts that are here don't get conveyed on the screen. And then sometimes I'm back, you know, like my grammar could be off or, you know, I forgot to put a uh, punctuation or something like that. I used your instead of you are, you know. So, so these things happen with this type of communication. So what I would suggest in this particular case is rather than meeting up, is to have a phone date. My suggestion would be to initiate a telephone call where you actually speak for an hour or so to build up some rapport over the phone. Look, it's a challenging these days to meet total strangers. And I get it. You don't want to go get on a, a, a subway to go uptown or downtown or wherever he lives. Um, and you don't want to invest that either. The reality is, is men and women want to invest the least amount of time. And we judge men as being bad for wanting to invest the least amount of time. The reality is, is these days, it's frustrating to date in this, in this internet age. It's uncomfortable to date people that you know very little about that are total strangers and worse. It's that we look at a profile and we put this person in this maybe category, but that because it isn't so substantially stunning enough to say, oh my God, she's, you know, Farrah Fawcett and I'm going to chase her wherever she lives. I'm picking on Farrah Fawcett because I'm from that Charlie's Angels era. By the way, I was more of a Jacqueline Smith fan anyway. Also kind of had a thing for Cheryl Ladd, but that's another story. Okay, coming back to, our, our, is he lazy? He, it's really, he just wants to make the least amount of effort. That doesn't make him a bad guy. So why not initiate a telephone call? Just simply say, hey, you know, before we meet, is it okay if that we chat on the phone for a little bit to get to know each other to, uh, before we meet? And that way you've uh, initiated the effort. Now you might be going, oh my God, that's in your masculine energy. No, it is not in your masculine energy to initiate a telephone call. And simply say, hey, before we meet, it'd be, it'd be great to talk on the phone to get to know each other a little bit. Okay, so let's say you talk on the phone. On the phone, you can make a little joke. Say, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. When you suggested coming to your part of town, I kind of thought you were snobby. And I just wanted to own that. Okay, I thought you were kind of snobby and I wanted to own that. The point is, get, see how he responds to that. Because if he is snobby, he will go into a controlling defensive behavior. Actually, it doesn't have to be snobby to go, go into a controlling defensive behavior. But if he gets defensive about it, it gives you a clue on where his bandwidth is, quite frankly, on his sense of humor. Because you can make it a little bit of a joke to say, you know what, I'll be honest with you. I thought you were snobby. And you can say it tongue in cheek. Okay. Now you've established this telephone call, this rapport. You can simply say, you know, it'd make me feel great or it would feel really awesome if you just came to my part of town. That shows, you know, I, I, I've, I prefer that, makes me feel safer. And, um, and, you know, I'd like to get to know you and meet you. But, and at the same time, I'd feel safer if we came to my part of town. See how he reacts. Now, you must keep in mind, most guys are talking to three or four women at the same time. Most women are talking to three or four men at the same time. And this might be a deal breaker. A lot of men do the numbers game. They're communicating with a lot of people at the same time, which is very natural with this medium. You're meeting a total stranger. You haven't met through um, mutual friends. Okay, this is the tricky part. But we can make a big deal. You can make a mountain out of a molehill. You could simply say he's snobby and you can just reject him. Or you could simply make a little bit of effort to see if he's willing to meet you halfway. I don't mean, well, you, he can meet you halfway in a different part of town. Maybe you guys meet somewhere in town that's only 10 minutes from each other. That's another option as well. But I want you to know 
men are lazy. They want to make the least amount of effort. That doesn't make them bad men. That doesn't make them uh, unavailable for a relationship. It's just a natural byproduct of what's happening using this medium of technology to connect with people. He doesn't know who you are yet. And you don't know who he is yet. At the same time, sometimes we have to roll the dice because you might be surprised. You never know if this might be a person worth exploring. So again, you can meet up with them. That's one option. I suggest getting on a telephone call just to see if you have telephone report in that telephone call. Suggest somewhere halfway or somewhere near you, which would make you feel safer, and then see how he responds to that. That'll give you an indication if he's a good guy or not. If he likes your profile enough, he'll make the effort. I know if I liked a woman's profile enough, I'd make the effort, and yet I have been very lazy too. I'd rather people come to me. Listen, after COVID, a lot of people don't want to go anywhere these days, so this is just a natural byproduct of what's happening in the dating, mating, and relating realm. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Please post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. If you have something to add, I'd really appreciate it. As always, if you find value in the group, please tell your friends about Midlife Love Mastery. Send them to my website, jonathanasley.com. Have them click the group coaching button so you, they can join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. There's a teddy bear. Give it or them a hug of love. Because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.